like, share, subscribe. Hey y'all, welcome back. Number 10 is a little bit of a doozy. If you have never been introduced to sequences, then this is going to be totally foreign, but I'm going to try my best to explain it to you, uh, even if you haven't been exposed to this or the sum notation or any of this. So anyway, it says a ball is dropped from a height of h feet and repeatedly bounces off the floor. After each bounce, the ball reaches a height that is two-thirds of the height from which it previously fell. For example, after the first bounce, the ball reaches a height of two-thirds h feet. Which of the following represents the total feet the ball travels between the first and the sixth bounce? So first I'm gonna just try to illustrate what's happening here and try to break down you know, how we would calculate the total amount of feet that it travels, um, and, then, and then we'll go through how to kind of piece it together into this notation. So it starts at h feet. So let's say, you know, here is, you know, the height at which the ball was originally dropped, uh, and then it dropped, or, and then it, so it fell, here's the ground here. Okay, so here's the ground, here's h feet. So there, there's h feet right there. Okay, so the ball is dropped. Let me just go ahead and draw a ball just to really get this. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, there we go. So here's the ball. It's going to be dropped. And then so it's going to come down and it's going to bounce. And then it's going to come back up, but only two-thirds of the original way, right? And then it's going to bounce again. Oops. Um, it's going to bounce again and then come up two-thirds around the original way. So if I'm keeping track of the bounces here, I'm just kind of freehanding this with a mouse, so forgive the sloppiness here. Um, I'm gonna keep track of each bounce, because really I only care about everything that's happening between the first and the sixth bounce. So, um, so here's bounce one, two, and then three. And then again down, and then here's bounce four, bounce five, and then finally, down six, and then that's where we're going to stop. So we're going to start the scenario right here. Here's bounce one. And so we're going to start here. Here's bounce two. Here's bounce three, four, five. And then when it hits the ground for the sixth time, we're going to be done. So if this first fall was H feet, right, that means that to get from where the you know the floor to the next height, we would multiply that height by two thirds, right? So this height is going to be two thirds. Oh, let's uh, make that actually look like a fraction here. Uh, two thirds times the height, right? But another thing to keep in track of is the fact that you're actually traveling that twice, right? You're going two thirds height up but also down, okay? So I'm just gonna write this once, but know that on the way down here, we're gonna have to do it again. So maybe I'll just actually type it twice, right? Two-thirds height going up and two-thirds height going down. Now, on the second bounce, it's two-thirds of the previous bounce, right? Like, so this, the height from the ground up to where the ball gets again is two-thirds of the previous bounce. So we're gonna have to multiply by two-thirds again, right? And so one way that we can represent this repeated multiplication is with, a, uh, with, with an exponent, right? So instead of writing, having to write like two-thirds two times two-thirds, I can also just write, write this as two-thirds squared, right? I'm gonna multiply that two-thirds twice. Oh, lost my square there. Okay, and again, it does travel that on the way up and the way down. Okay, so that's what's happening between bounce two and three. Between bounce three and four, it's, doing, it's going up two-thirds of the previous height. So we're going to multiply that by two-thirds again, and hopefully you can start to see what's happening here, is that for every bounce, what's changing here in terms of how much distance is traveled is this two-thirds just gets multiplied one extra time every time. So that exponent should be increasing by one after each bounce. Okay, so after the fourth bounce, 
it's going to be two thirds to the fourth power because we're going to multiply two thirds four times. Now we're getting a little crowded here, but hopefully you can kind of see what I'm trying to explain here as far as like how to compute all these different distances. Okay, whether you're going up or down, um, we gotta we gotta keep track of both of those. I'm just gonna move this a little bit, make it a little bit easier to read. Okay, so there's a last one that we need after the fifth bounce, because we're going to stop once it hits the ground for the sixth time, uh, is, is we're going to multiply by two-thirds again, because it's two-thirds of the previous height. Okay, so let's, um, now that we kind of have a better understanding of the situation here, where we're adding like this number, um, so let's, let's, let's actually start this sum. All right, so we got two of these, two two-thirds times h, right? We'll just say that's two-thirds to the one power to keep it simple so that all these will kind of look the same. And so there's two of those, there are two of these, there are two of these, two of these, and then finally, two of these, okay? So what I'm gonna do is actually put all of these in brackets and say, okay, well, it's two times all that. Okay, so notice that each one of these little expressions look ex exactly the same except for the uh, the exponent here is changing. It's one, two, three, four, five. So let me like, kind of explain this notation here. Whenever you see this capital sigma, it kind of looks like a jagged, uh, like an angled E. Okay, this is actually a Greek letter. That means sum. And essentially what you do is this is representing a sum, meaning like you're adding up a bunch of terms. And the terms are going to be defined by the expression in front of that sigma. So we're looking for something that kind of looks like this, right? Except this is what's changing, this i. And what we want to do is actually plug in 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Okay, I'm actually going to move this h over. Since multiplication is commutative, I'm free to do that. And so, um, yeah, so the way to write that would, would be to say, okay, so this means sum. Okay, we're going to add up a bunch of terms, and then to indicate what the first term is and the last term is, in other words, the numbers you're plugging into this little i, you're going to say i equals, this is going to be the first number we plug in, which is going to be 1, and then the last number we plug in is going to be 5. And that should collect all the terms here. So now I'm going back and I'm looking at my answer choices, and I can see that the correct answer here is going to be a. So yeah, uh, you might want to... Kind of there, there's a couple other terms here if you want a little bit more in-depth explanation on kind of what's going on here. You may consider Googling uh, or looking up YouTube videos on geometric series is really like uh, going to be, you know, what this problem is based off of, this concept of a geometric series. Um, although it can get a little confusing with the notation, so just, you know, be ready for that. Um, but yeah, so the answer on number 10 is A. That's it for number 10. Uh, thanks for watching, and y'all have a great day.